Okay, so um, we've been looking at different tough topics, different things that are kind of hard to talk about. Um, and, you know, we've talked about transgender and homosexuality, and so it seems like abortion is another tough topic that kind of needs to be addressed. Um, mostly because people just don't really seem sure about where to go. And the problem is, is that well, the people who are arguing about it are not objective. Um, there's, you know, obviously religious people have a stake in this because yeah, the implications of it. But then there's the people who um, kind of use it to argue for women's rights. But they don't actually seem interested in the topic of abortion so much as they seem interested in women's rights. Um, and so it kind of seems to sometimes go down to more of the Bible versus feminism rather than abortion. Kind of like a proxy argument. And so let's just kind of look at it. First off, what is a fetus? It seems like there's a lot of misunderstandings about, you know, that whole idea of a fetus. So let's just kind of, let's just kind of start with that. Scientifically, it's a developing human. It's that simple. What does, you know, people get, like to make it a religious argument or maybe a philosophical argument or maybe a civil rights argument. It's none of those things. It's a simple scientific fact. It's a developing human. When you look at a fetus, you don't just see a, a, a goop. You don't just see goop. You see a developing human. And if you were to take that fetus out and, and look at it under a scope, you see genetic material forming into life. It's much like a two-year-old. That, that's just maybe further along in the developmental process, but it is still developing. People kind of get, kind of overstate their view. They bring uh, philosophy into you know, well, you know, if it's actually a person, um, you know, how it should be when when they're a self-aware, conscious being. Okay, why? You know, it seems like the argument's getting too broad. Well, what does the Bible have to say about it? What does it matter what the Bible has to say about it? Uh, completely irrelevant to the conversation. I, I'm not going to ask you what the Quran has to say about it because it's irrelevant to the conversation. Science shows us that it is a developing human being. That's what it is. Um, at, at this point, the people would say, well, what about, what about you know, uh, somebody, a, a vegetable, which I'm going to talk about in a second. It's just not really the same thing at all. You know, that's somebody who's exiting life. This is someone who's entering life. This is developing. That's There's no progress on that. There's completely different, just completely different, scientifically. Not, once again, philosophically. At conception, the moment the sperm meets the egg, all genetic material is present, and it begins forming into something. Okay? Life is existing. Something is happening. It's not just a clump of goo. Um, sperm contains genetic material in it. But it doesn't have, there's no life. There, it, it has a potential for life. It, it isn't life. Egg, an egg has, has um, genetic material present. It has the potential for life, but it doesn't have life. When the sperm meets the egg, the chromosomes start forming, and they start writing that material and forming into, developing into an adult. Now, it takes some time to develop into an adult. Nine months in the womb, and then 20-something years after that, to form into a fully functional, matured adult. And also, it, it varies on whether it's a male or a female. Females um, mature faster, males take longer. I mean, you can you can tell that by, I mean, just look at our president. hey -o! Just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Anyways, it, it's somewhere in this conversation that people say, well, what about, like, chicken eggs? You know, you eat, you eat chicken, you eat baby chickens. No, you, once again, there seems to be a little bit of a misunderstanding about what's actually happening. A chicken egg doesn't have a baby chicken in it unless the rooster impregnates the chicken. Now, if you buy eggs from the store, most of the time they will not be fertile. Most of the time they keep their hens separate from the roosters. Well, if the hen is separate from the rooster, it couldn't have been fertilized. So you're actually not eating a baby chicken. You're eating, once again, that half. It would be the equivalent of 
eating a woman's, you know, egg, or whatever. I mean, it's too small to actually eat. Well, you get kind of what I'm saying. It's not eating a baby chicken. Now, if you are eating fertile eggs, which is gross. I don't know if you've ever ugh, done that or not, but you all crack it open. There's, like, blood, and there's, like, a partially formed beak, and crab is like... <laughs> Which is gross. I mean, eh. when I when I had chickens, uh, I always kept my rooster separate from that and didn't. Oh, that was just gross. Ugh. Anyways, so it's not the same once again. Um, so then we see, well, well, what about signs of life? Are there any signs of life? Okay, well, it really depends what what evidence you want to look at. Some people don't want to look at the evidence, you know. Then they say, well. The ability for self-awareness doesn't form until, you know, after four months somewhere or some nonsense like that, which, okay, whatever. Once again, this is kind of getting more into philosophy than science. So, you know, it kind of is more on preformed opinions than what science actually shows us. This is what science shows us. After three weeks, there's a heartbeat. At conception, you've got all the material present, and within a day, I mean, it's, it's not like there's... It's not like the sperm just kind of hangs out there for a while, okay. You know, the sperm meets the egg, and life immediately starts developing. I mean, there, there's there's no hangover time or something. So then you've got, it, it, it it's developing, getting more and more co uh, complex, getting more and more present. Within three weeks, you have a heartbeat. The baby oftentimes has its own blood pumping separate from the mother's blood. Um, after fifth weeks, you've got more of vis physical traits, you know, things that you can see, like limbs and eyes and stuff like that. Okay. And by the sixth week, you have active brain. You have. Let me reword that. You have detectable brain waves. It's already been in effect before that, but here's when you have detectable. Now, once again, people will say, "Well, isn't that just like a vegetable?" No, N no, it's nothing like a vegetable. First off, besides that whole argument, let's just leave that aside, there's a difference between something developing and something not developing. A fully grown adult who is on life support, they are not developing. They are exiting life. A vegetable, adult vegetable that is once again on life support, they are not developing. They're not, they're, they're going if it wasn't for people intervening, they would have died. Well, here, if it wasn't for people intervening, the fetus would have lived. And, you know, well, then they say, well, well, the doctor said, I know this is hard for us to hear, but science doesn't have all the answers, and neither do doctors. And I don't want to sound like one of those anti-science kooks. I'm not saying that at all. But sometimes I have known people personally who the doctor told them, your baby's not going to make it. And then they had the child anyways, and the baby was perfectly fine. I'm just saying they are not infallible. They are people. Do you ever make mistakes? Well, doctors make mistakes too. Does every brain surgery always end in success? No. There are such things as mistakes. So, anyways, so that takes us kind of more broadly. The fetus is... A human life. I mean, it's just obvious. And if you remove all of your preconceived bias about what you want to believe, what you choose to believe, and all that stuff, your religion, your your politics, your you know, social stance, your feminism, all those things. If you just take science for what it is, you've got a human life. So then, we really see that it's not a religious argument. It doesn't matter what the Bible says, and it's also not a woman's right issue. It's it doesn't matter what what the woman's choice is. It's not even relevant for the conversation. This is a morality issue. You know, saying, well, you have to be a woman to have a, to have a view is the same as saying, well, you have to own a slave to have an opinion on slavery. Why? If, if something is a moral issue, you don't have to partake of that wrong thing to say that it's wrong. Sex outside of, of marriage is wrong. And I say that. Have I had sex outside of marriage? Never once. I've never once had sex outside of marriage. I have been married exactly one time, and I've only had sex with one person, and that's my wife. I don't have to do something wrong to say that it's wrong. 
Is it wrong to cheat on your wife? Yes. Have I ever cheated on my wife? No. Well, how do I know? Isn't it? Isn't it only an adulterer's decision? That's just nonsense. That just doesn't make sense at all. So we should legalize slavery so that I can own a slave so then I can tell you that slavery is wrong. What? What? That just doesn't make sense. And what, that's the same thing it comes down to. If we're dealing with human life, then it's not about a woman's rights. It's about a person's ability to get a chance to live. It's their choice. Well, that's great and all, but what about the woman's rights? Well, I'm not saying you don't have rights. You exercised your right to have sex without protection and to do nothing to prevent this pregnancy. And so now you have a pregnancy. And so now it's no longer just your right. Now it's also somebody else's right. This child's right. See, I'm all for female equality. I'm all for, for human rights. But that means I also have to give human rights to a child the same as I have to give it to an adult. I mean, that just makes sense. Just because someone can't talk doesn't mean that they don't have rights. So then that takes us to the idea of, is murder really wrong, or is it sometimes justified? That's what it really comes down to. Science shows us that a fetus is a human life. That's what it comes down to. It's that simple. So the question is, is it wrong to murder that human, human life? That's what it comes down to. That's, that's the argument. That is the argument that, 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 that really comes in. Now, I am of the mind that it is wrong to mur commit murder. Now, the reason why I am of that mind is because God said that people are made in the image of God. Therefore, I cannot just take a life. Now, I would like to mention that there's a difference between protecting yourself and murder. Killing versus murder. If you're in war, for instance, you're being attacked, you are attacking somebody else, that's not murder, that's killing. But that's a whole different argument. And I'm not here to discuss pacifism and all that stuff. Not even interested. So, that's what it really comes down to, is murder wrong. And so some people would say, well, it's like, it's like a zit. It's just material. No, actually, that's not what science shows us. You know, the people who make these kinds of arguments, I, I genuinely am concerned that they don't read books. I'm genuinely concerned. And this is this is kind of something you see on Facebook. People don't read books and then or articles really of any kind. And then they get with a bunch of other people who don't read and they form their own opinions and they decide what to believe. And so then they just keep repeating this nonsense. Okay. All right. Um, no, there's obviously different kinds of liquid material that the body produces. A zit comes from, you know, a pore, all right? We've got pre-cum, you know, that's something that prepares for sexual intercourse. That would kind of be a little bit like, I guess, in the same classification as a zit. But sperm is more complicated than that because it actually carries genetic material. But once again, sperm by itself really, there's nothing there. Fine. All right. And actually, the Bible never says anything against masturbation either. I just want to throw that out there. It talks about, in Genesis, there's a guy who specifically did something just to spite his brother. Totally different. Totally different. In fact, if you read the law, it says about if a man has an omission. And masturbation was well known. And yet it never condemned masturbation. So the law seems to have allowed masturbation. And Jesus only said that lusting in your heart after somebody was adultery. So just kind of clarify that. Masturbation is not wrong as long as you're not lusting after somebody who you aren't married to, obviously. It's hard to not lust after your spouse if you're having sex with them. Anyways, so then you have these two... <sighs> There's two material things, you know, eggs and sperms, which are in a different class from zits and pre and all that stuff. And then you have them when they're together, which form forms life. And so, no, it's not like a zit. Read a book, honestly. So that takes us to the idea of what makes someone a human. And you've got all these different people with all their different views, but ultimately you have the genetic material that says this is a human. They have their own genetic material. It's not, it's not the mother.
It's a unique being at the point of conception. That's what science shows us. The problem is people don't want to listen to science when it's not convenient. You know, people will listen to science when it says, okay, that there is no God. But then when it says, well, actually, science shows that there is a God. Well, I don't want to listen to that part. Okay. So you have a bunch of people who really are just using science as far as it will support their view, but not actually listening to science. And that's exactly the same thing that we have with abortion. People are listening to science as far as it agrees with what they believe. But then as soon as it steps into something that may imply something else, nope, I've already decided that abortion is okay. I've already decided that a fetus is not a life. I've already decided that human life begins at the point that it comes out of the womb, which doesn't make any sense, but whatever. And so then, okay, I already brought up the thing about development stages. So then people say, well, it's just like a parasite. Well, actually, no, it, it's not. I mean, the different traits are so... There's just so many di so many differences between a parasite and a fetus. A fetus is temporarily dependent on the mother, not the host, the mother, as a part of our reproductive cycle. Like chickens lay an egg. We don't lay eggs. We keep it in, in it. The the womb is the incubation chamber. Well. It's just a part of that reproductive cycle. It, it, it's not a parasite. A parasite at its most complicated form is still a parasite. It's not developing into something else. It is a parasite. It sucks off the host. It does harm to the host for its own well-being. That's a parasite. A fetus needs incubation, just like a chicken egg does, as it develops into a self-dependent being who can then carry on the process again. That's completely separate. Now, obviously, you could take a more, an even more scientific approach to this and compare them side by side. Do they have similarities? Yes, they have similarities. But if there's anything that science shows us, similarity does not mean same. Once again, people are kind of getting a little bit brain dead when it comes to actual thinking. There's kind of this herd thinking. Well, everybody says that, that it's a parasite, so it's a parasite. What? Okay. And then there's the most obvious thing out of all these things, that there are ways to prevent pregnancy. Pregnancy isn't just something that ha it just happens. I was reading somewhere about the window of when a woman can get pregnant. There's like a three-day a three-day period in, in a month. That, uh, that a woman can actually achieve pregnancy. So, I mean, there's really multiple options for not getting pregnant. There's the most obvious one, not having sex. Now, some people are, well, that's not fair. Why is that? Why, why is that not fair? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> you won't die if you don't have sex. It's not like it's the end of the world if you don't have sex. So that you could not have sex. You could... Uh, take birth control. You can take birth control and condoms. Condoms are not very efficient by themselves. Um, I would not, you know, obviously put put all <laughs> bet my my what is it called? bet the farm on that. I, I definitely would not bet the farm on 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 condoms alone. I would kind of maybe condoms and something else. Um, but then you know, morning after and stuff like that. It actually is is still abortion. It's a lighter form of it, but it's, it's still abortion. Um, anything that prevents that forming life to stop, that's 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 abortion. You've got life that you are terminating. That is abortion. It would be the same as you've got a two-year-old, and you decide that it's not convenient to have them anymore, so you kill them. It's the exact same thing. The only thing is the law doesn't condone killing a two-year-old, but it does killing it and killing a fetus. Now, obviously, I shouldn't have to say this, but just because something is legal or illegal doesn't make it right or wrong, just so you know. Morality is not decided by the state. So then there's alternatives. There's adoption. You can have the baby and spit it out for adoption if you don't want to keep it. That's fine, uh, besides not getting pregnant in the first place. Well, I don't want to put them in the foster care system. Here's the thing. The kids that are stuck in the foster care system are kids that are over the age of usually like two. In fact, it, it, the older you get, the higher chance that they will be in the system. Most of the people who are stuck in the system are like 12-year-olds 12 12 -year and up. 
you have a lot of 16 and 17 year olds who people say that's a waste of my time and so they don't adopt them and they just write them off as whatever and that is definitely wrong however there's a waiting list for babies babies don't go into they, they don't just go into into the system there are hundreds of people waiting for babies it's just so unrealistic to say my my child will be stuck in a foster home. So you would rather kill your child than giving them a, a chance at life, and all of that. But what? <laughs> they will have a home very very quickly. Um, ultimately, what what the society needs is more fathers who don't abandon their kids. That's what our society really needs. Because you have a bunch of twelve year olds without fathers, who don't know how to be a man and they don't know how to live. They don't even know what it requires. What does it mean to be a man? Does that mean I toughen up? What does it mean to be a woman? Does that mean I have to dress like a princess all the time? What What does it mean? People are unsure of their sexuality because they have a broken home. What this society really needs is it needs fathers and mothers who actually care about their kids more than they care about their next high, more than they care about living their own life. You just got Anyways, that's a discussion for another time. So then what about babies who are born premature and all this stuff? Here's the thing. Babies born as early as 25 weeks still have a good chance of living. Science has come a long way. So to then say, oh, well, all these things that may happen, you can't commit murder for the sake of what may happen. That just that just doesn't make sense at all. Excuse me. And many modern ideas revolve around speculation. Arguments about consciousness, about self-awareness, about what makes someone a human, about religion or lack of religion, about this, that, and the other thing. If you notice, I left a comment at the end. That's kind of like saying etc. There's all these different arguments that people bring into the discussion of abortion. It has nothing to do with what science shows us. This is the root. Science shows that it's this life. That it, obviously, if we look at it genetically, it's a human life. And that, that human life is in a stage of development. Just like a two-year-old is in a stage of development. And to terminate that life is to kill that life, which is murder. It's that simple. Obviously, science doesn't give us a consensus of whether there's value to human life. Science doesn't give us a consensus as to whether murder is wrong. But I think we can all agree that murder is wrong. So then some people say, well, make it legal and less people will do it. Hmm. Hmm. That's an idea. Let's stop and think about that. Yeah, that's a really stupid idea. Let's make slavery legal. And then less people will own slaves. What? Well, slavery isn't a thing anymore. Actually, there's more slaves today than there ever have been in human history, so that's just not true. And there's actually a lot of countries who legally have slaves. So get out of your bubble and realize that that is a thing. Just saying. To make something legal so that people won't do it flies in the face of the entire need for a government. See, a government isn't there for welfare. A government is there to govern. To protect morality. To protect right and wrong. If somebody kills somebody, you have government who's supposed to make the situation right. People don't just do whatever's right in their own eyes. Government. To prevent anarchy. Like, I don't understand why this has gotten so complicated. But in modern days, they've made government where it has to do all kinds of things that, that is not a government's responsibility. They have to provide for the sick and for the, for the elderly and for the young and for everyone. What? <laughs> live and let live. You do your thing and I'll do my thing. Okay, well, let's, let's kind of once again bring up the whole issue of slavery. Did the North say... Okay, you just go ahead and live however you want, we'll live however we want. No. Should they have? No. It is the responsibility of every person, every person to watch out for your neighbor. That is our responsibility. We are supposed to watch out for each other. People are a community whether you like it or not. And it is that, jo that community's job to support itself. I mean... It's like the cells of a body, they have to work together for success to happen. You can't just turn a blind eye to something that's wrong. 
if you wouldn't have interfered with a vegetable, they would they they wouldn't. I have it blocked by the thing, but it says they wouldn't have lived. They would have died. Okay. If you wouldn't have interfered with a fetus, it would have lived. So you've got people interfering with the natural course of life, and then make making up false philosophy to to address those things. Okay, so we've decided when a life should end and when it should begin. Well, so when does a life become a life? So I mean, and so now we're setting up all kind of false, you know, juxtapositions and all kinds of just things that don't make sense. If we would just listen to science, honestly, this whole situation would go away. I personally believe that Christianity also, as a religious thing, does not support abortion. But my argument has not been based on on religion. It has not been based on women's rights. It's been based on science. And at the end of the day, that's what we need more of, a scientific analysis of abortion.